Good day everyone, my name is Jumataya Adumiz and I will be running you through the respiratory charts today. First of all, you start from the subjective information. You ask the patients about the pain, the pain intensity on a scale of 1 to 10 and this, the patient tells you how he feels. Then, we go to the subjective information. Alright, so this, the pain is about the... Um, pain while the patient is breathing so how then the next thing is cough if the type the the how the person how the patient is coughing if it is dry or it is um, it's coming out with fluid and the discharge or uh, secretion regarding the discharge it might be due to na nasal discharge or if the patient coughs if it is wet cough, then you know it's discharge. Then we can go to the vitals. The pulse, we all know the pulse range 60 to 90 per minute. So that's the range for the normal. One. And the next is the respiratory, respiration and breathing. The range for the norm is 12 to 20. If it is more than 20, and by the near, if it is less than 12, but for our patients, everything is normal. The use of medical, mechanical ventilation, it's sometimes patients need assistance in breathing. If in case we have an institution of lung collapse, so we use mechanical, but for our patients, yeah, there was no need for it's also essential to watch out for the blood pressure of the patient to know if it is within the normal range of normal range of less than 120 over 80 less than 80 consciousness of the patient these are to be observed temperature of the patient the skin must be checked out for cyanotic sign to know if the patient is really breathing and the oxygen is saturated Intra, intravenous access now the IV line is used just in case to pass fluid into the body and sometimes if the patient is in coma then the IV line is used to feed and get drugs into the, the patient the site of surgery for the patient in this case stoma because the patient is not conscious and there might be need for incision. <clears throat> yeah. The site of incision, the site of incision for surgery must be probably probably check, checked for tracheostomy or laryngeal laryngeotomy. So these are ensured to check for inflammation, irritation, hemorrhage and the dressing state of the point of incision. Vomiting it's you you check if you take note of vomiting in the patient in order to avoid aspiration in order to avoid aspiration and looking for a patient he didn't vomit drainage losses drainage losses um nasogastric tuberosis and wound drainages and all these things were well, for feeding for feeding the patient, we will need nasogastric stool for the first three to four days. If the patient can, is not coming around, then we shift to the gastrostomy or as the case might be. And then we know the order of diets from the clear food to sweet food, salt, regular. And before the surgery, the, the patient is placed on NPO. In case of respiratory disorder, the best position, the preferable position is to be on the fowler, semi-fowler or orthopedic position. And anti-embolism anti stocks are used if the patient is bedridden just to enhance blood circulation in the body. Deep breathing and coughing exercise will help the patient in in with breathing, especially when the person is just coming from a coma, like from anesthetic, 
um, post-operative anesthetic um, situation. So all these exercises help the patient to get better and application of heat and cold application also they are therapeutic way of enhancing the patient's um, recovery, back rub and now oxygenator. Oxygenator is used to measure the blood saturation, the oxygen saturation in the blood of the patient. It's a mechanical device just like a clip and it's measured the total measures the pulse of the patient. Now when pulse oximeter is not available we can use capillary refill time that is we month pressure on the extremities of the patient for a few seconds until it turns white and you release so you you just check for the time it changes if it's less than two to three seconds and the patient is okay but if it's beyond that it might be signaling an underlying condition the the next is the track tracheostomy or langeostomy the langeostomy the tracheostomy is used to um, help assist the patient in breathing if the patient cannot breathe well maybe due to um, blockage in the track then you use tracheostomy to get oxygen into the the langeostomy also feels it's also doing the same function but it's more permanent in patients so for our patients it, we didn't use it so Chest drainage system monitoring is used to is used when the patient has pneumothorax or pneumothorax. It helps in collecting the um, fluid that might have been accumulated there. Then the presence. Why doing that? You check out for the presence of bubbles, you know, in the system and the presence of blood from the discharge. So all these are essential for treatment and monitoring of patients or using them who has respiratory disorders. Thank you.